question of who owns the hardware is much less interesting than who owns the capacity to use the internet and who owns the information on the internet. And where, what has the, the development of the cloud, how has the development of the cloud complicated or enriched that conversation? You can see both sides of that coin, right? So given the current structure of, say, applications on top of the internet, we've talked about the various layers, um, we've seen a lot of, say, Gmail has only been around for, what, eight years now, maybe nine? And other applications that instead of hosting data on your own device or you know, on your home computer, it made much more sense to have it centrally located such that if you wanted to check your email, say, when you're traveling in Afghanistan or if you're elsewhere and you're not on your own device with the data stored, you can access it that way, right? So clearly everyone uses cloud-based uh, applications. I'm sure you're familiar with many of them. One recently IPO'd, right? So um, what that means is that our data is stored in a central location, but at the same time we lose an element of control because there's a gatekeeper now, and in particular that could be, say, YouTube, the host of videos, or say, you know, Gmail, Facebook, and so on. And in many ways, um, for example, uh, YouTube uses geolocation technology, um, sorry, geofiltering technology to filter various videos. In, say, Thailand, it's illegal yes. to criticize the king. So um, YouTube will geofilter videos that are critical of the king in Thailand. Um, there are other scenarios in which videos are taken down from everything for copyright reasons or for violations of, of laws and so on. And there's a central choke point. So on the one hand, there can be more control. Sometimes that's a good thing, say, in the case of child pornography. On the other hand, there can also be censorship involved. Um, there are also privacy issues. I don't know if people have heard about, say, what happened with Sony or a variety of other. It feels like every week there's a new example of, say, a massive breach of user data. But when user data is stored in a way in which it's accessible all in one place and often not encrypted, which is still shocking to me, say, that Sony wouldn't use such encryption, um, it's much more easily accessed. So what we're seeing now is a backlash against this cloud infrastructure and a push toward greater decentralization. The internet inherently, as we've discussed, is a decentralized network, right? You have all the New Yorkers or the tourists, sorry, in New York that are trying to get the Statue of Liberty. But what we're seeing is more and more buses that are storing, say, the tourists, and now people are trying to get off the bus. Mm. 